Okay, um, there's been, I've been getting a few questions on um, solving a polynomial uh, such as the one you see here. So I wanna um, kind of step out of the realm of linear algebra and go back and review some of those uh, concepts from pre-calculus because it is important to know how to solve something like this uh, without, the, um, without the calculator. All right, so let me go through. Okay. So, um, so what we want to do, right, is, um, and this is a lot of this, te this technique I'm about to show you is um, uh, from uh, Descartes. Uh, so Descartes did a lot of, uh, uh, discovered a lot about how to solve these. Um, and so the idea is that we have to come up with a list of possible rational zeros. And then once we find one, then we can start to, um, we can start to um, reduce this polynomial. Um, so that we can break it apart and then find its um, zeros. Okay. So one thing is, uh, one thing I do want to mention here is that um, if you recall, right, if you look at the um, sign, if you look at the value of the signs here, right, um, there is no, um, notice that there is no change here in signs, right? So it's all negative, 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 right? So that means, so when that happens, whenever you have something like this, um, that's indicative of meaning that there's no, um, there are no positive uh, zeros, no positive roots. Okay, so we know, we know that just by um, looking at this, all right, looking at the signs. Okay, so there's no positive zeros. Roots. Okay, so how about let's look at see if there's going to be any possible negative um, roots. So to do that, what you do is you simply uh, plug you plug in my, a negative value into here. Okay, so think of this as a function. Okay, and then if you if you evaluate this at minus x, then you're going to get minus negative x cubed minus twelve minus x squared minus fourteen minus x minus fifty. Okay, so that's going to be minus, right? And then that's going to give you positive. This will be positive, so you're going to be getting minus 12x squared. Uh, this will be 45x minus 50. All right, so let's look at the sign changes for this case. Okay, so we have one, right? It's going from positive to negative, and then from negative to positive, and then from positive to negative. So. So what this tells us, okay, and there's a little bit, um, there's a little bit of a, a theory behind this, okay, and it's in that pre-calculus um, link or that pre-calculus textbook that I sent. Um, so the idea here is for, um, is that you look at the sign changes, okay. So there's a total of three of them. And so then you count down by two. So that means there's going to be either three, or and then. You count down again, you count down by two. So there's going to be three or one. So we know based on this result, we know there's got to be at least one negative root. And this, by the way, is counting multiplicity. Okay. Um, and we, so we know there's no positive roots, but we know that there's um, either three or one. So this, so just kind of stepping back for a moment, if you look at the degree here, the degree is three, right? So this tells us um, either we have one negative root and then the two others are are complex or all three of them are real, okay? And it turns out for this case, which, we'll, which I'll show you, it turns out that there's three roots, three, um, three negative roots, okay? So this is kind of an interesting, um, kind of an interesting technique just to give us uh, kind of an idea, right? Of, of, what, of what to expect, okay? All right, so, all right, so then now let's build our list of possible real roots. So I'm going to just write it here. So, uh, okay. So what we do is we look at the factors, take the ratio of the factors of 50, and then we look at the factors of whatever whatever's in front of here. So it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus. And again, we have to. Uh, whereas this, um, 
we're always assuming, right? We want this to be in descending order, which means the exponents are decreasing. So it's gonna be the constant. So we look at the factors of the constant and then the factors of the leading coefficient. All right, so, the, so let's build our list. So factors of 50 and we include plus or minus, right? So we have plus or minus one, uh, obviously two is the next one. Um, and then we have five, 10, Uh, 25 and then 50. So you count the uh, number itself, right? Okay. And then we're going to divide this by factors of one. Okay. So if it was four, then you would have plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. Okay. So so now you take you take each one of these, right? And divide by this one. Okay. So if there are others here. So you would take this number, divide by all these, you would take this number, divide by all these, take this number, divide by all these, and so on, okay? All right. So in this case, uh, we're just left with these, just left with the numerator values. Okay. So if, so what this says, okay, this is not telling us, so basically this is not saying that um, these are going to be the roots. These are possible, right? These are possible rational zeros. This may not even have any rational zeros, okay? Uh, if it did have a rational zero, then it would be in this list, okay? So I do want to emphasize that this is a possible list, okay? So possible rational zeros. I'll just use the term root because I think it just uh, sounds, more, sounds better. Okay. So possible rational roots. Okay. All right, so, um, so we start with, um, typically we start with the smallest value because it's easier to work with and then we just work our way up. So what we need to do is find out, right? We wanna find out, we need to find a root. We need to test these to see if uh, we just go ahead and find the root. So let's start with one. Okay. And so the technique I'm going to use here is called synthetic division. So we're only working with the coefficients. So we have minus one here, minus 12, minus 45, and then minus 50. Okay, okay so we're going to bring this down. So you, right, so you bring down minus one, then you, multi you take this times this one, so minus one times one. That's gonna give us minus one. We store the result there, we're gonna get minus 13. Minus 13 times negative one is negative 13. Um, and then we get minus 58, okay? Minus 58 times negative one, sorry, times one will be minus 58. And so we end up getting minus yeah, 108. So remember, so the order, the, um, the so think of this as placeholders, right? So this is your constant term. This is your x term, x squared coefficient, x coefficient. So, so when you do this, remember that when you're dividing by a real number, it's always reducing by, the degree is always reducing by one. So this turns out to be the remainder. This is constant. This is the coefficient for x, okay? Um, this is the coefficient for x squared. So in any case, um, this is not a root because if it was, remember that from, from pre calculus, remember that if the remainder is zero, that means this has to be a root. Okay. Okay. So, so, one, so one is not a root. So let's try the next one. Let's try negative one. Okay. So we bring this down. That's the, always the first step. Bring that down. Minus one times minus one is going to be uh, one. We get negative 11. Negative 11 times minus one is be 11. And then we have minus 45 plus 11. Okay. That's going to give us minus 34. Minus 34 times negative one. Let's go to the result here. That's going to be 34. Okay. And then 34 minus 50. Right, that gives us minus 16. So again, we don't have remainder zero. So um, this is not a this is not a root. Okay. 
By the way, you can also do this using the regular long division if you want. Okay. And again, this is all explained in that pre-calculus textbook that I sent out. All right. Um, so let's try minus two. So again, bring down the minus one. So minus one times negative two is two. Um, you're gonna get minus 10. Negative 10 times minus two is 20. 20 minus 45, okay, it's gonna be minus 25. Minus 25 times minus two is positive 50. And so we get 50 minus 50 is zero. So we get a remainder zero that tells us that this, right, this is, one of the roots, okay? So now with this in mind, okay? So we have at least one, okay? So the question is, what are, are the other two complex or are they real? Well, we're gonna find out, okay? So go back here, okay? So what this, so this is basically, so division is just a, um, it's basically just a factoring algorithm. Okay, uh, and so then we go back here. So that result is going to give us a new polynomial because again, this is just taking, uh, basically reducing our polynomial. Okay, we know this is a root. Okay, so we're going to have, um, I'll write that over here. So we're going to have minus, so I'll go ahead and write underneath here. So this is gonna be minus x squared minus 10x minus 25. And we want to find the roots for that. Okay. So this is the same thing as solving for um, x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, and this turns out to be factorable, right? Okay, so this turns out to be x plus five squared, okay? Or x plus five times x plus five. Okay. And so that means we have x equals to negative five with multiplicity of two. Okay. Again, the multiplicity has to do with this exponent. Okay, so that's counted. So that counts, that's sometimes referred to, um, sometimes we call that double root. Uh, so that counts as twice, and then we have one here. So we have a total of three, okay? So, so this is our other root. So we end up getting the factorization for this, right? So this turns out to be, based on this, we have x plus two times x plus five squared, okay? So that's, that's the factorization for this polynomial. Not only that, we have we also have the zeros. Okay. Good. Yeah, so we start with right. So you look. So you can look at the sign changes. Remember that uh, for positive roots, just look at the sign changes here. In this case, there's zero. So we know absolutely there's no there are no positive um, roots. Okay. And then we look at substitute in here. Right? Substitute minus x. And that will give us the possible uh, negative roots, okay? All right. And so based on this, we know it must be either three or, or there must be three or one. So this is, um, so this could be, um, so this doesn't necessarily have to be a rational, it could be a real root, okay? But, but this definitely, uh, for this polynomial, it either be three or one, okay, at this point. Um, and then we go on, right, so you build, you look at the factor to take the factors of these, divide by the, all the possible factors of these, start with the lowest number, go through the division, and then eventually you'll find one, right? If it does have a rational zero, again, just because it's in here doesn't mean it's going to have a rational zero, okay? All right, so then you um, go through the division, you find one that's going to give us the um, reduced polynomial, and then from there we're able to, um, we're able to solve for that, okay? In fact, if you wanted to continue with the long division, sorry, continue with synthetic division, we could have done that too, okay? But it just so happens that this was, it was observed that this is factorable, okay? 
under the integers. So it turns out that we get x equals to minus five with multiplicity of two. Okay, so there's a solution, right? And then, um, so you can see how this factors into finding the eigenvalues. 